hello back to my family. Uh, good afternoon. Today is, I believe, Wednesday. And, um, you know, I was thinking about something in a few seconds, a few seconds and I, I want to ask you guys this question. And please feel free to comment. Do we feel that just because someone doesn't vote that they don't have a right to complain? Because if we feel that way, I disagree with that completely. Because... You have a choice whether to vote or not to vote. And you should not vote because you have to. There's no thing as you have to. Our ancestors died so we could vote and get something in return. Not just vote and not get anything. So the notion that we have to vote because that's what they died for is, is foolishness. We need to vote and get something in return. And if these parties are not offering us anything, or if we want something and they're saying no, then we should say no and hold our vote. It's the same thing. And I want you guys to imagine this. If someone walked to you, and say for example you're sitting in a room, and it's you as a black person, you as a white person, you as a gay person, you as a um, Mexican or Latino person, or anyone in that group, or you as an Asian person, and they walked around and they said, you know what, I'm going to do something for her. you, 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 and you. But they left yourself out of it, yourself and your people out of the argument. How would you feel? Would you feel like, you, would you feel like, you know what, I'm going to be a big idiot to still look for this person after they just said to me, I'm not going to do anything for you. Or do you feel like, oh, it's okay, I'll vote for them anyway. That is how black people have been operating for so long and it must change. The Democratic Party, as you know, the whole system, looks out for everyone else but us. And we have been going along with it for too long. That must change. That must change. We must be either one of two things. If they leave us out, we stay out. And we say, you know what? You're not getting our votes. You know what, we'll make our own parties. For example, the Bank Panther Party of Self Defense. We'll join that party and we'll come together and we'll get things done for ourselves. There's no reason why some of those things, especially the older generation, think that, okay, you have to vote. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. It is a choice. Am I saying that voting is not, is not important? No, I'm not saying that. I do believe that voting is important. I do believe that you should vote. But you should only vote when something is on the table for you. You should not go out and either get in your car, drive to the, to the voting office, or walk, or catch the bus, wherever you have to do to get there. I do not believe you should waste your money, your gas, your time, or your voice to go vote for someone who has nothing, who does not care anything about you or will not fight for your interests. I believe that we do have to understand that, okay, you know what? Those of us who are of the older generation are from a different time, from a different era. They are of a different mindset. So that we have to understand that those of us in different generations think differently and we have to allow each other to think differently. We cannot harp on what other ones think or what other ones think. We have to make those choices for ourselves. So, a lot of millennials, I'm, I'm 22, I will be a millennial. A lot of us feel like we're not going to vote. And just that simple. I don't blame them. However, I will say this and I said this again. Voting is very important, but you must vote and get something in return. There is no such thing as voting for the lesser of two evils. Dick Rodrigo once said that if you vote for lesser of two evils, you yourself are evil. I imagine that most of you who see this will consider yourself a good person. I will ask you this question. If you went to the voting office today, right? And 
they said to you, listen, you have two options, right? This person is going to die. You're either going to chop his head off and or you're going to shoot him. And they told you this guy was innocent. Now you know that in your heart that it is wrong to kill someone innocent who's innocent of their crimes. You can attest that that is evil, right? So I will ask you, if you vote, those of you who probably would vote to kill this person, at some later time, and the question is asked, should those people who voted to kill this person be charged with murder? Or should it just be the ones who physically did it? Ask yourself that question. If we're going by the notion of voting for the lesser of two evils, what is lesser? Especially when the result is the same. Either way, evil is evil. There is no such, there may be something, if you compare the two, there may be one that is worse. But as far as evil being evil, evil is evil regardless of what it is. There is no well, lesser or lighter evil. Same thing with racism. There is no worse form or no lesser form. Well, actually there is, but it's still racism. It's still the same stuff. So we as black folks have to understand that. And that's not fall for, oh, you have to vote because of Trump or whatever. No. We'll pick the lesser of two evils. That is what I... One thing I can remember from the 2016 presidential elections. I myself said it. We have to vote for the lesser of two evils. I will tell you now that that was a mistake. I voted for Hillary Clinton. And look who's in office now. Trump. Look who the Electoral College put in there. I will say to you this. There is no such thing as the lesser of two evils. Evil is evil. And we must call it out. Those of us who feel like if you don't vote, you shouldn't say anything, they are wrong. You are wrong. If you don't want to vote, don't vote. If you don't like anyone on the ballot, don't vote. Sit out. Or would you vote? At the end of the day, you are speaking also by holding your vote. So the notion that you have to vote or stay silent is wrong. You, you, you should vote, but you should vote for those who have your best interest in heart. Those who are good people. Those who do best for the country. Those who do best for your crew. So as black people, we have to vote for those of us who do best for our crew. I'm not saying that we have to not consider that, okay, you know what, there are other groups in this country. Yes, there are. So, like I said in my last video, if we vote for someone and they go to, to, the, to the table and we want to change the 13th Amendment to end mass incarceration, reparations, then let's say, for example, we don't get an end to mass incarceration, but we change the 13th Amendment, right? That's progress. See, that's progress. And that will still shutter mass incarceration. Because that means that you can no longer be a slave, which may incorporate that, you know what, these corporations can. The systems can't lock you up, these corporations can't use you as a slave. So that still makes progress. So yes, we might still get locked up more than others, Yes, but at least you can't be considered a slave and be made to work for less than less than a living wage for pennies. That's still progress. So that the next time we can say, you know what? Now we can focus on getting our people out of the system and becoming free, stopping mass incarceration. So we have to come to the table and negotiate in, in our best terms, in our best favor. Just like every other group. And I will tell you this. It doesn't matter if there are such things as subgroups. For example, immigrants. And when I say immigrants, I mean black immigrants are a subgroup. Because when you say immigrants, you, you, you incorporate the black immigrants, the, the white immigrants, the Asian immigrants, the 
Latino immigrants, all of those, or the Mexican immigrants, and those who oppress them, so they are a subgroup. They can be divided in many other groups. The LGBTQ, they don't have a specific image. Some of them are white, black, Hispanic, Asian, whatever. So you must understand, whatever race you are, that what, that's what goes first. The LGBTQ issue doesn't go over the black issue. The immigration issue is not over the black issue. The black issue must come first. Whatever skin you wear, that's what comes first. The feminism thing, black people, we have to stay out of that and stay out of the way. Black men, we have to leave the white woman alone and stay out of that. This Me Too movement, black women, stop supporting that. It is destroying the black man. Black men first, not this woman's pride or whatever, especially when a black woman has never been equal to the white woman, never. The abortion issue, black women, stop, stop going out for that. Stop saying, oh, this is my sister to a white woman, but she won't even bat an eye for you when one of you is shot down by these bullies. None of them came out out in, in, out in rage for Pamela Turner or Sandra Bland or any other woman that I, I don't know of or I fail to speak about. None of them have come out and said we are appalled at this and spoken outrage or perhaps done something to aid us in our fight. None of them. So we must understand that we have no friends. We must be our friends to work to each other and work together only then. Once we have our own plan, our own base, our own plan call to action, that's when we can say, you know what? This is our arraignment. This is the step we're gonna take. This is what we want as a collective. When I mean collective, I mean black people globally in this country, no matter where you're from. But anyway, that's just my little rant for today. It took this time. Right now I'm at the dentist's office, so I'm almost there. So I have to say, I have to cut it off, and y'all have a good day.